So, are you ready, Andy? Shut up! Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. The clock is dripping with blood. For myself, I, I have seen the dark shadows moving in the woods, and I have no doubt that whatever I have resurrected through this book is sure to come calling for me. You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? No funny how. I mean, funny like don't clown. Don't you know, you know, I'm Peter Vinkel. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man that doesn't spend time in this family can never be a real man. Yeah. I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Well, at least your levels are coming through strong today. How are you feeling today, Andy? I'm feeling good, feeling good. Tired, but good. How are you? Oh, I'm tired, but good. It's funny. Hey! Yeah, tired, but good. Yeah, yeah. It springs around the corner. We And uh, what, what more could we ask for? I mean... Uh... Yeah, there's a slight feeling of optimism in the air, isn't there? I won't go that far. Really, I wouldn't there, go that far. That's that's <laughs> you know everything's yeah. off. The world's ending. <laughs> yeah, the world is ending, and uh, yeah, nothing's in our control. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a few weeks since we've done a a, um, a podcast. The uh, last one was, uh, of course, our Die Hard Crocodile Dundee double header. Double header, yeah. And um, yeah. And this week we're going to be talking about the Evil Dead series because we haven't done it yet. Surprisingly, we haven't. And this came about, didn't it? Because you sent me a clip of uh, some game that you were... Uh, was an online game you were playing? It and is. You were playing, yeah. And you were playing it as Ash, the character Ash. And I was like, oh, this really makes me want to talk about Evil Dead. So, Did it make you want to play the game? I mean, I, I, playing as Ash is quite quite an interesting, you know, it's quite fun. Is it? What's the game again? It's actually Fortnite, of all things. It's, it's, it's that one game that that every single teacher hates, every parent rants on about, and and it's the kind of thing you think, well, I don't want to touch that with a barge pole. I, I don't want to know. And, and for about, I think for about six years now, I've just like, don't want to know. Don't want to know. It sounds stupid. It's uh, it sounds like a kiddie thing, but kids shouldn't be playing it. It's definitely not. It's actually a very competitive game. It's a lot of fun, and it's a more, it's more sci-fi than anything else that's out there. It's um, oh, wow. yeah. it's a totally, totally your thing. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, I I used to play uh, Star Trek Voyager Elite Forces Hollow Match, and we used to do tournaments years ago, back in two thousand nine, two thousand ten. And you know, I'm not a gamer. I don't do gaming. I mean, it really isn't my thing. But uh, just just to kind of wind down the hours, it's fantastic. Just to get get in there with some people that do that you friends with, and just just run around doing stupid things. You know. Wow. What more can you ask for? Because you're not, you're not a gamer either at all. No, 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 no at all. No. That's why I've never bothered you with this <laughs> ever. I usually play that that game that you get in your phone where you like. You chop up fruit. <laughs> what, what's that? The chop up fruit, fruit game. Yes. Yeah, the ch chop up fruit. Speaking yeah. of chopping up, though, we're going to talk oh. about the evil death. <laughs> what a segue. Yeah. Professional podcast in Stephen Radford. That's, that's how it's done. I fear that the only way to stop those possessed by the spirits of the book is through the act of bodily dismemberment. <laughs> I don't care what happens to her. She's your girlfriend. You take care of her. How did you discover the Evil Dead? What was what was your origin story for this franchise? So I, was, uh, I, I think this might be similar to you, but when I was at uh, college, 
I got obsessed to find the most goriest films I could. <laughs> and at that time, Evil Dead was banned. It were you couldn't you couldn't get it. Um, but it was a dodgy place in Manchester in the Coliseum. They used to sell. I used to get all my Hong Kong cinema from there, so you, where you couldn't get like Drunken Master Two, I could get it from this guy. But he also had all these little for this little back thing. You know, he got, and he goes to him and goes like, "Have you got anything nasty?" And I'd heard about Evil Dead. Nasty, it was, nasty, it? Have you got any yeah. uh, <clears throat> nasty? Yeah, you got anything nasty? And he'd come out with some like sometimes awful films. Like, well, I remember like Evil Dead Trap and things like that. But I knew about Evil Dead. It, it would have been talked about because I bought all the like gore magazines. Was it, was it a magazine called Gore or something like that? Fangoria? Might have been that. Fangoria, maybe. It was all about horror films and they talk about Evil Dead and you could find it anywhere. So he, mm. I got it from him on like a dodgy video copy and I brought it back and watched it and loved it. The original, you know, the very first one I thought That's it was it. exactly what I wanted, you know. And I, I you know, I got, oh, we're going to talk about all three films, obviously, but. And more, uh, maybe. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the series, Asher versus Evil Dead, which is brilliant. Love is, that. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good. Uh, but yeah, I've got, I've got like a, I like, I like all three films. And I know everyone talks about Evil Dead 2 being like amazing, one of the best films ever made and all that. But to me, the original, the first one is the, is the special one for me. That's it. It hit the sweet spot in terms of cabin in the woods fantasy horror. I mean, that's kind of. Yeah. That's it, it. It did everything and more. I mean, it, it. Every step of the way, there was an envelope being pushed, which is yeah. a weird expression, but uh, I think it's breaking new grounds in every every step. It really um, is, and they were just students at the time, weren't they? You know, it would, you know, I weren't Sam Raimi a student at the time when he was making Evil Dead. Um, he was when he was making uh, the 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 short film that he made before that. Short film, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that something, was something in the woods. Good. It's like going. Yeah, into, yeah. It's like, I think it was just a, a stroll in the woods, maybe. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, Bruce well, Campbell was was, well, was his as well. So yeah, and it was you know it, it's hard to watch it on VHS that's that scrambled screen. You know there isn't an actual real copy that's available unless unless it's on a Blu-ray special edition of Evil Dead somewhere. Because I haven't actually looked for it, but yeah, I've watched it on YouTube and it's it's grainy and, and but it, it, it packs a punch there is still a lot well, of I have the Blu-ray I've yeah. got the Blu-ray for all, all three films you do I love it. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's just yeah the only bit that's cut out is the um the, the nasty tree bit they cut that out now yeah yeah, yeah it's almost the version I've got the very the first version I had that the grainy VHS that part's in it but it's not in the um it's weird, isn't it? Because that that scene, um, Sam Raimi has already said that he's not proud of it. It was a, it was a a, a teenage fantasy that just he, he couldn't let go, and he just had to do it. Yeah, it was the kids, there were kids making yeah. a film, trying trying to make it as extreme as they possibly could, and you can understand that. Exactly, but it's not. Exactly. It's, there's no reason for it, <laughs> really. There, there, in the whole, yeah. It it could easily have just been something that you didn't have to see, you know. It was, yeah. uh, but um, you know, there's been there have been horror movies since then that have done just the same thing, you know, with, with you know, aliens penetrating in all kinds of different ways, and it's yeah. you know, yeah, it's almost as if it's become a, a a trope that that somebody out there has to try every so often, and yeah. it, it's like no. That it's 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 not uh, that's not what horror is. That's 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 the suburban film. That's not <laughs> that's not what we're yeah. for. But, but in the in the remake, mm. they they do it in the remake. They did, but yeah, which is nastier because the tree trunk was thicker. <laughs> you know, it was... We'll get to that anyway. We'll get to that. We'll get to that definitely. But yeah, it it I, weirdly enough, I didn't actually see it as being as 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 horrific but then uh, once you've had a palette you know once you've had a banquet of all these different horror films not a lot kind of affects you as much as it did when you first watched them so evil dead especially you know i i can just put it on in the middle of the day it's easy you can put it on in the middle of the night it's just enjoyable to watch and why it is, is that 
why is it so easy to watch and yet so many gory films it's like no i'm not gonna watch that on my own it's i I guess it's because it's it is fantasy isn't it it's not Mm. as even though these nasty things are happening to these people but it's not it's not realistic it's not it's like yeah too extreme to be body shock yeah, and I mean, everyone talks about this, but the only bit that makes me go, oh, is the pencil in the ankle. That's the only part that makes me cringe a little bit yeah. because that would be horrible. But the other things are just so far out there. You think, all right. Exactly. You know, I mean, there, there's a scene in Payback where they're, they're, are they chopping digits off Mel Gibson's feet? I think they're chopping his yeah. toes off. I mean, and that's, that is like, no, just, just yeah, but but seeing somebody's arm being pulled off out of its socket is is so unreal so crazily unreal that it that it just it just looks comical when it happens yeah so much so i remember watching an episode of ren and stimpy where they go to a gym mm-hmm. and this big cake he's got one of those uh, chest press and he's like Ugh! and then both his arms just rip off and it was like that's a kid's cartoon <laughs> you know what i mean Wow. Yeah. I, how did that get past the censors? My gosh. It wouldn't now, would it? But, you know, I mean, like back in the 90s. It yeah, was, I mean, Looney, know, Looney Tunes yeah. must have had some similar things, but they, they, they always just dented faces. And, the, you know, if, if an anvil landed on somebody, it would just flatten them. There'd be no, yeah. you know, it, it's totally different because, yeah. Also, it's just it's just comedy, and Bruce Campbell was was an amazing choice for casting in that. It just so yeah. happens that he and Sam Raimi were were school friends, in, yeah, to best begin with, best buddies. Yeah, but you can't imagine anybody else in the role of Ash. No, definitely not. I mean, it's him, isn't it? it absolutely, it's just all him. It's just all him, and and Bruce Campbell, he has got that 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 quality that. You know, he could he could easily come out as looking like like an, an asshole. He could so easily have actually just switched into the wrong kind of mode, and he would have been unlikable. But he's yeah, always likable. No matter what he does, he's always likable and welcome. You know, he's comfortable yeah. to be around. He's absolutely anti-hero. Not as much in the first one. In the first one, he's just trying to get through the night, isn't he? He is. Uh, when you go to Evil Dead Two. And three, he turns into this anti-hero, bit of a arsehole, mm. wisecracking, yeah, guy. But exactly all the time, yeah. Yeah, and and again through the series, I mean the, the TV series that followed, he he's literally just lived. I mean he's living this character as though he's just had enough, and he knows what he's doing. Everybody, get him out of way. I'm 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 handling this. Yeah, you know? and he comes across as as you know. Not being like, oh, I know everything about this, but he just bursts in, and it's it's, it's the actions speak louder than his words, and I think that's kind of yeah. how he, you know, so he never actually says, uh, "I'm an asshole, get out of my way." He just he just does it. Yeah, he well, he's a bit, like, especially in the TV series again. Um, he's a bit of an idiot, isn't he? Yeah. You know, he's sort of bumbling his way through life, and he just happens to be all mixed up with the deadites and everything, but he's just. And I think that just shows that, you know, sometimes age doesn't necessarily equal experience, you know, yeah. and a lot of that could have just been his his covering for age. You know, that's, uh, you know, not not everybody's going to be sharp as a tack, no matter what. I mean, he might be anti-hero, but. Uh, I mean, because he's like, well, he's in his 40s, 50s, and um, he's still just working in that convenience store. You know, is, uh, is, that, is he a manager? I don't think he's even a manager, is he? He's just like a shop assistant. Just, assist, just an assistant. And that's, yeah. Living in a trailer. You so know, he's, not humbled, really got... he's humbled and yet, you know, drifter. Drifter humbled. Drifter humbled. Humbled drifter. And it is <laughs> it is a perfect, ex, uh, perfectly beautifully executed, um, I mean, the, the, the first films, the, the three films, it's sophisticated juvenilia of horror. Where it's, yeah. it's 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 all it is almost juvenile, some of the stuff yeah. that they come up with, but it's sophisticated. It's it's on a level above anything that 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 can be done by parody or or done by Alan Adam Sandler, Alan Alan Sandler, Alan Sandler, <laughs> yeah, his brother, <laughs> his brother Alan, yeah, brother Alan, 
Yeah. yeah. But, but there's, like a, there's obviously that slapstick quality to it, which is brilliant, you know. Yeah, there is. And, and uh, there's more of that in number two than there is in the uh, in the first one, of course. Well, the first one really is, uh, it's a straight up horror film. Yes, yeah, isn't up. it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Deadites are having a good old time in it. They're, they're quite funny and they're having a laugh, tormenting people. But it's the second one where it becomes more straight up comedy. Yeah, that's with, it. With horrific gore, you know. But the first one, I think, was an attempt to. I, and I'm, you know, by all accounts, it was hellish to me, wasn't it? Like that cabin was boiling hot and they, all the blood and all the stuff they were using, apparently, it was horrible to film. It was horrible to film, yeah, and um, because it actually was a cabin in the woods, it wasn't a se- well. There, there were still set pieces that they needed to build afterwards, of course, but but majority of it was was all shot there on location. It was filled with cow dung, pig dung, or whatever dung you can find that animals leave behind. Because yeah, some of the crew members, <laughs> sorry, thirteen crew members actually stayed there, didn't they? They stayed overnight to watch over the equipment because they didn't want anything to get stolen. Yeah, um, I mean, people knew they were out there, and uh, they didn't want to take any chances. So they was they they took it in shifts. Perfect. Wow. Well, yeah. And yeah, and there was no like plumbing there, so none of the they went days without being able to have a shower or anything. That's it. And yeah, I I I I don't know how much of that could you know I, I, they probably went days without a shower and and then had a big luxury spar and then came back you know i I can imagine it's not completely end-to-end filth but uh, when they're actually in the cabin it would just be you know as soon as they walk in they'd be caked in it anyway so yeah Yeah. well what a film what a film so was this the original cabin in the woods film Yeah, I mean, Last House on the left was basically just out open brush. That was just, there, there was no cabin there. There was a cabin in the woods. Yeah, I think this was the original. This was the start of it, wasn't true, it? True, true. At, yeah, there may have been cabins in, in woods before where the, the, the location is there. But the idea of the cabin being this 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 bubble entity that keeps you there. This, yeah. this was the first because and that can leave you just look out and go oh i, I don't like this I'm, I'm going home and um, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know but with evil dead there is no escaping you're, you're there you're stuck you, there's no way you're going to cross over that bridge because it's it's gone yeah the, the woods i assume the woods ripped the bridge apart I, the I, yeah i would assume that the actual woods were the bridge that the actual deadites were the bridge and they yeah. That's that's how they knew somebody was coming. It's like an early warning signal. But so, so for anyone who's never watched this film, yeah. and probably would do. So some friends go on a holiday to a cabin in the woods. Um, they're having a, they're having a nice time, a few drinks. Yeah, Shelley, then... Linda, Scott, and uh, and of course Bruce. Ash. Yeah, and then that latch opens, doesn't it? They're all just having a chat, and then that latch just opens. That's it. It's, it's... on the floor. I'm like what? And and they, so so you know, common sense glands removed straight away because they all go, yeah. "Oh, that latch just opened by itself. I'm going to go down there and have a look." That yeah, <laughs> and because it's Evil Dead, you know what? What else? What else can you do? You know. You go yeah, down well, there. You you have a look. You you do a little bit of a jump scare. You pretend that that you know you go, be, be really quiet, scare the girls, you know. Yeah. And um, then of course, look what we found. Yeah. Which, Ooh, let's play this tape. Yeah, which wasn't that much. I mean, th- to be honest, in in the original Evil Dead, there wasn't that much down there to really be freaked out about. Of course, in the remake, they just take it to the extreme. Because oh, it's hell on down there. Yeah. It's like, we want that. I mean, just make it look like an ordinary basement. That's all you need to do. Make it look as ordinary or or, or as innocent as as possible. Well, exactly. When we talked about the Exorcist, what one part that makes the Exorcist really scary is just a house that could be mm. your neighbor. Exactly. And all this horror, horror is going on in there, but you're not aware of it. Anyone walking past the house, no idea. They, of so, course, yeah. they had to walk around the um, the attic just that once. They just had to have that little walk around. 
Oh yeah, with a... and that's it because that's just an attic. Attics are always a, a fun little segue to kind of get the tension building. Yeah, um, and of course the basement is exactly the same. You know, there's a basement. Let's go down there. Let's get yeah. that tension moving. Let's let's get that feeling, you know, of of dread. Uh, but that tape is amazing. I mean, yeah, the tape itself playing. I mean, they could they could have had any voice. I just, there, genu just, genuinely genuinely. Really The earlier shows I mentioned, we don't we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Oh, I lost you for a second. Yeah, sorry. I think there might have been a slight power pop because all oh, the house alarms have just gone off. Yeah. Yeah, but it seems to be okay. Come back to us, Andy. Join us. Join, Join us. Groovy. But <laughs> just prior to do that, there's a really cool scene where um, I forget her name now, the, the actress' name, but she's on the bed and she's drawing, and then a hand gets taken over, and yeah. she draws the book, doesn't she? But in like really nasty, crude Scribbles, fashion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a really cool scene. Like she's suddenly taken over. You know, I really like that part. Yeah, yeah. it's when the clock's ticking, tick tock, tick, and then it just stops, and then she just draws that thing, doesn't she? It's, it's it's wonderful. I mean, uh, that that's what so, that's what we like about it. It's it's the creativity of um you know absolutely. having that yeah you know, um just moments of possession. I, they, they did the same a similar thing in the Changeling where they've got the the psychic dr writing messages on paper. And um, if you ever get to watch that film, that is a really incredible film. Um, a very underrated one. But yeah, the the, the scribbling of 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 stuff is it's usually with children as well it's usually the children who do the the, the creepy drawings yeah you know what's why it's all creepy, right? yeah. Where a child was there. or if you're watching oh was it pieces it, it's uh pornographic jigsaws oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, you know every kid is different yeah you know you've got to you you've got to encourage the creativity of you the kids. Do. <laughs> And just don't leave, don't leave the axe so close to the to the children's bedroom. No, yeah, no. there's no there's no children in this one though. There are no children. No, in this. no, just some friends. You know, I think it's into two couples, isn't it? And then just one spare wheel, a pod girl. Yeah, she, oh, she just on, comes on yeah. her own. Because it's funny because it's shy, isn't it? you kind of it's just half ash, isn't it? Yeah, because it's Cheryl, uh, Lin Linda and it's Linda and Ash, it's Scotty and Cheryl, and Shelley is the uh, the third wheel. Yeah, Shelley, who's Ash's sister. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, which is um, yeah, which is an unusual thing as well, you know, for you know, for you know, he, he took her there because he was feeling sorry for her because she didn't have any else, anything else to do. So he just, you know, that's what that's what brothers are for. Learn yeah, you to come, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so obviously she freaked out. She decides she's leaving. Oh no! Does, what? How does she end up in the woods? It's weird. Does she isn't decide it? she's leaving? Walk or no matter. No, how she hears. It, yeah. She, Don't. She hears talk. That's she what it is. is. Yeah. She yeah, and so she goes out to investigate it, and next thing you know, she's miles away from the cabin. And she's and she's got to run back, hasn't she? Yeah, she 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 doesn't know where 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 she's going, and that's it. She she basically encounters that uh, tree from hell. Yeah, the the horny tree. Horny tree, which becomes the sixth um, student uh, kid in the you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sixth character. Um. So, yeah, and 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 even though it's it's. That 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 scene was kind of uh, really wrong. That there, there was uh, hardly any nudity in this. Really, it wasn't really built around the no, idea I mean, of um, let's have your knockers out in this scene and, and let's let's do, let's let's be really crude and show your butt in this scene. And the boobs are out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like you say, you know, how did Shelley get out? Go out into the woods again? Oh, yeah. Well, she heard voices, didn't she? And she goes, "Because yeah. obviously they play the tape, 
she gets really freaked out by the tape and tells him to turn it off. Yeah. Well, obviously playing the tape has awakened the Cantarian. Cantarian. Can, Cantarians. The, yeah. Cantarian demons. Yeah. And um, literally, all hell breaks loose. Can Candarian. 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 That's it. Can- I think Candarian, Candarian may have been one of those uh, aliens in Star Trek that Captain Kirk made love to. Yeah, Cantarian is in evil head. <laughs> Yeah, Shatner's head. Yeah, <laughs> Shatner's head. Um, but yeah, the the Can- Kandarians, which you know, you know, I, I'm surprised, and I wouldn't be surprised if fans have actually kind of created a, a big mythology online somewhere where you can actually look up every single detail of the Necromicon and what everything everything means. Somebody must have deconstructed that book. A Kandarian is the character in is a character in World of Warcraft, apparently. Oh right. Can't find anything else about Kandarian though. Ooh. It says it on the uh Oh, it's spelled with a K, it's not a C. Oh with a K, yep, yep. Like Kardashian. Kardashian. Like Kardashian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lots of uh, plastic surgery. Oh, there will be soon. Oh, you wait for those. Yeah. Wait for that. But um, yeah, I think I think when I watched Evil Dead, I was already kind of in swimming in my um, my horror genre of 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 com- especially comedy horror. I mean, the comedy in yeah. this. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of American Werewolf in London, and yeah. no matter what, the comedy kind of just sits so well because it's not telling jokes. It's not standing there telling jokes. It's just being funny. Yeah. And I mean, like the Deadites are having a ball torturing and tormenting the, the humans. And it, they're, they're having a great old time. And that's the humans it. Are. it is a party. <laughs> it is a party. That's all it is. Yeah. It's just, it, it's no different than, than when we have a party and we're, we're buying the heads off um, kebab sticks. You know, it's just, we are the kebab sticks of the story. We are the, we're the shish kebabs of, of this, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that's it. We're, we're just hors d'oeuvres. We're, 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 we're always the buffet that. table. <laughs> when Shelley first gets possessed, and you know the, it's the, when they're reading the cards, and it, she's pretending to be able to guess what the cards are. It's like, oh yeah, you're getting them right, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, I can't remember they're called like Jack of Jack of Clubs, whatever, you know, Jack of Spades, Cut of Clubs, ah, and she turns around, yeah, and then yeah. she's like, the she? her head's doing that weird thing, and that voice comes out, why have you awakened us from our slumber? What always made me laugh is afterwards, like, what's wrong with her eyes? Can you see her eyes? Did you see her eyes? What was wrong with her eyes? No one mentioned the fact that she was actually levitating two feet from the ground. Just talk about her eyes. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be a bit, a bit of a, a thing going on with, with you know, what, what's with the, is it conjunctivitis maybe? You know, she might have. Yeah, a, yeah, you know, I'm a bit worried. Like... I, think, I think we need to get some drops for her eyes. I'm like, she was literally levitating. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh... talking about yeah yeah let's 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 bury the lead on that one um yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but that's the thing you know you, you, in a moment of terror do you focus on on the things you know that you can c- control or understand i mean i don't know it's weird but levitating is a it's not something you see every day oh really no well i do but you yeah, know not yeah me. yeah i see levitating all the time yeah 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 that's uh yeah you, you live in Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, we all levitate around here. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah it's, but the levels of gore are just are ridiculous. Yeah, they they went through a lot. I mean, they weren't exactly going to be able to come back and do pickups after they finished, clearly. <laughs> so if, if anything, they'd have to do all, any of the shots uh, anywhere else, basically. Um, anywhere but that cabin and, and i tell you what if i owned that cabin and they were just using it to make a film i wouldn't want to clean it up after them gosh the amount of you know yeah nitroglycerin uh, glue all that latex all that uh but yeah I mean, the special effects were really incredible i know it's all practical all of it's practical yeah. Practical, yeah. Most of it's decided on the spot. What, how are we going to do this? What do we do? Well, don't worry about Bruce. He bruises easily, and um, you know it's not a problem. Bruce, Bruce Campbell will just do anything. Just, just 
throw it at him. I think everyone got injured at some point, too. I remember my brother Don fell off a cliff. Uh, well, during when we were scouting or shooting somewhere. Because you sent me to Kmart, we had no sleep, and I was at Kmart saying, I need uh, 16, <laughs> 6 by 4, 2 by uh, plywood boards. And I barely got the strength to buy them and haul them onto the car and strap them up and drive them back. Well, let me tell you, that movie gave me a Vietnam-like resonance in my life. I went home, back home to Michigan, I slept on the floor of my room. There was a beautiful, comfortable bed. I slept on the floor of my bed for probably two months. And my mother was like, uh, quick question, Bruce, why are you sleeping on the floor? And I, and I started growing a beard, just, just some strange thing. I, I went feral when I went home. And I went, well, that's how we would have done it in, in Tennessee. I know that experience messed me up, too. I couldn't I even speak about the horrors of the experience for, <laughs> for weeks. I couldn't really tell anyone what had... I've never been able to really tell anyone that the depth of the hardness of that experience, the levels of exhaustion. Yeah, bringing in heinous things to film, anywhere from Madagascar cockroaches that would hiss at you. Uh, there were little snakes, little garden snakes, just uh, creamed corn. I mean, just all kinds of things going in and out of that basement. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the joy of Evil Dead. That's it. It's right there. Yeah. And I can't believe we've not talked about the famous camera move. The camera running through the woods. Well, it's funny because, yeah, it, it's um, no matter what the Evil Dead film. I mean, I was watching the remakes and they were trying to do the same thing again. Yeah. And it's like, we know it's a drone. And then, of course, they say, OK, you guys know that we're going to be using a drone. So guess what? It's a drone. Well, yeah. I like that. I like that about Evil Dead, right? They it's did. What they doing subverted it. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Not as much the, the first remake, the 2013 one, I want to say yeah. 2013. I'm not as much a fan of that one. I prefer the Evil Dead Rise. I thought I yeah. actually quite enjoyed it. But so, racing right. that steady cam through through the cabin, around the woods, through the branches, that, that in, in the original film, and of course in the sequels, they, they, they pretty yeah. much do the same thing. Um, but and it's just a camera put onto a plank of wood, and then they run through the woods. That's it. Yeah. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Just guerrilla filmmaking, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I really, I do miss guerrilla filmmaking. I think everybody's trying, trying the best to make everything too clean these days. But, yeah. But, uh, you know, they've got this be a little bit rough around the edges. I think I haven't seen anything since Monsters that had a little bit of grit and, and, and roughness to it. You know. Oh, that's very true. So uh, what what are we doing, Andy? We need to do a we need to do a we've done our short for CACO three. We need to we need to do the uh, the big movie. We do. We need to do, get big we need CACO to get... three movie. We do. Oh, no, we... we do. How do we do it, Andy? How? I don't know. You moved away, you bugger. I know. I know. And then I moved to the auction. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not like whoa. Yeah, it's so hard, but. But when you actually have a college friend who you, you can just work on film together, I mean, that, that is lucky as hell. I mean, it, it's, you know, you, you can't is. always get yeah. that. You can't always get that. And, um, you know, geography has a lot to do with it. But, you know, Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi went in his own direction as well um, after that. So He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not as if they were tied together. Otherwise, we would have seen Bruce Campbell being Spider-Man. And that would have been strange or funny. It would have been strange, but he still turns up in all the films, doesn't he? He always has a little cameo in all, all these films. He plays like a French restaurant owner in one of the Spider-Man films. And that. Yeah, he, he yeah. always turns I know who the flying Dutchman! Can I help you? Name, please? Parker. Peter. Ah, here we are. Table for two. Peck out. Come to see the show. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. No one will be seated after the doors are closed. Parker. But that is what I said. Peck out. So he is there. He is there. I lied. He he's there. He's always there. Yeah, yeah he's omnipresent. Like, like God. That's it. <laughs> he is. That's it. So the <laughs> sequel came out quite a few years after. Which yeah, so the like some Evil Dead ends, doesn't it? Where um, yeah, 
he's, he's gone out and he's the only one who survived. Everyone else is dead. He's bloody chopped his girl his girlfriend up into bits and you know all hell and he he survives the morning and you think he's done and then all of a sudden this camera the 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 steady cam camera onto a flank of wood just sort of comes out from behind a bush and races through the woods through the cabin the cabin's a lot smaller (laughs) it just kind of goes straight through the cabin knocks the door down and attacks bruce and that's how it ends and that really cheery song starts doesn't it it's like like a a bit of a swing jazz number starts in the credits yeah, troll. and that's exactly and that, how yeah, it should end it. Starts right there, doesn't it? Kind of, but then it's kind of a remake of this one again, sort of. It is. It's, uh, it's almost like it's an alternate dimension. Yeah, it's like uh, Ash. Okay, you, you've you've lived through this. Now we're gonna, you're going to live through it again, but in a different way. Yeah, and but you're going to be omni aware of every reality that you're experiencing, and I think that's what the Deadites do. They really put a spin on his reality and that's that's clever instead of just yeah. carrying on having ash what waking up in a hospital and going i've got to get back to that cabin i've got to get back yeah. to that cabin yeah all my friends die but maybe it's maybe they're not dead let's go back let's go but with back. It. yes let's put an end to this yes <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get Sigourney Weaver. We'll call it Evil Deads. Evil Deads. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A military. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's bring in the Marines. Let's bring in. Yeah. That that would be that would be the the James Cameron version of of Evil Dead Two. Would have yeah. been that would have been interesting if they actually had a, a whole military thing going on. I mean. Yeah. They never did. It would have worked. Actually. It wouldn't. I'm glad they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad they did. <laughs> so, what, what do you think of Evil Dead Two? Like Dead by Dawn. Dead by Dawn. But it was, it was incredible, and uh, his shirt yeah. was blue the whole time. It, it didn't really get stained that that much. It was, you know. Yeah. Um, very blue. That's all I, I I when I think of Ash, I just think of blue shirt, blue shirt. Um, but blue the shirt. whole the whole um beating himself up. With with the evil hand, the evil hand was just incredible. I mean, imagine that your hand is possessed and it's beating you up, and it you, <laughs> the only thing you can do is cut it off. And yeah, well, it gets infected, doesn't it? He has to cut it off before it spreads up his yeah his arm. That's what... You can feel it. Yeah, yeah. There's a nice little bit of stop motion, isn't it, where it just starts to crawl, creep up his arm, so you think. So obviously, the first time we have this, the chainsaw straight into the uh, tool shed, chainsaw loves his arm off. And that's that's I think that's it's that that moment that he becomes not Ash the mortal. It's it's Ash the antihero. He becomes a comic book character. Then he becomes Sin City kind of esque sense of 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 uh, you know if you do that, you're going to be bleeding out. You're going to die. But not Ash. No. I don't know. And he comes a lot more wisecracking in this one, isn't he? He's got his zingers, his, yeah. his lights and stuff. Which I th- I think, you know, Sam and Bruce obviously both thought, you know, oh, we should have we should have done that, we should have done this. And 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 the thing is, in in you know, whenever we make a film, we always think, oh, we we we, we should have done that. We should have done, you know, should is such a, a funny word, right, Andy? So it's yeah. it's, it's a shocking word because you know, so let's do it. Why not? Let's do it. And that's exactly yeah. what Evil Dead 2, it was kind of like a a big um, canvas for them to kind of do all the things that they, they wished they could have done with the first one and yeah. more. Yeah, but and this is six years later. That's the six it. years difference was because the Evil Dead, I think, was 1981. This was 1987. That's it. There's a l- long period of time and, and Ash really looks pretty much the same. He does look the same, yeah. He does. Do you know how we got made? Do you know how Evil Dead 2 got made? Tell me. Stephen King was such a massive fan of the original. He convinced, is it, I think it's Dino De Laurentiis or something uh, like Dino that. Dino De Laurentiis, yeah. That's a, he produced Maximum Overdrive in 1986, yes. uh, which is a, a Stephen King uh, book. Um, to to finance it, to finance Evil Dead Two, and that's how we got made. Yeah, it got financed, but because Dino De Laurenti wasn't wasn't really a horror 
he didn't really work with horror as a genre for his later for his uh, production company they had to make yeah. their own production company up just to just to kind of oh, right. promote it um because this falls back it's kind of a horror film wasn't it it, it is yes not um, like horror but you know but i think because of what evil dead represented and how much of that you know to actually have evil dead 2 on your on your ticket i think he was a little wary so he made them uh create a production company and what was that called again da, 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 da. man looking at phone <laughs> it was rosebud releasing it was a rosebud release and uh they basically sam raimi got a guy just to, who was an animator said just animate this do an animation we need we need to have something at the beginning of the film that isn't dino de la Ronte, um right. just so that uh it can be uh separated from from his uh you know his namesake was in there but the actual releasing of it wasn't on his label right okay interesting very yeah. interesting there you go yeah cool <laughs> cool <laughs> but he didn't need to worry he didn't need to worry because no. it's, pretty, it's a pretty good film, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And again, you kind of have to keep revisiting it to remember everything that goes on because these films are filled. They are packed. Yeah. 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 They're, you know, we complain about films being fast paced now and, and, and too much going on and you don't have time to think. Well, this was the really the, the the way it was done right, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to, 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 but it, it it works so well having the ridiculous amount of gore mixed mm. in with that humor. You know, like like you just said when he's having the he's having a fight with his hand. It's 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 hilarious. It is hilarious, and it's even. The I'd like thing when someone tries to put you in an eye and you put your hand so it, so they can't get the fingers on it. They even do that. It's such an infantile, ridiculous thing. Sophisticated but it's all, juvenilia. It's perfect. Yeah, it's a yeah. really good term. Did you coin that or someone else? Uh, somebody else coined that. I can't take credit for that. Take credit for it anyway. And, um, but yeah, it's so brilliant. And <laughs> That's it. Um... This one to the cabin with his girlfriend doesn't he it's not like a big team of friends his girlfriend gets possessed is yeah. that they, they, it, it is just a romantic getaway one you know yeah because remember a journalist turns up who's studying the book that's it and then him, him and the journalist end up having to battle through the night that's it that's exactly what happens and you know so because they needed to have more more characters coming in but not necessarily the you know the, the friends yeah, who may may or may not be already there in that reality or in that circumstance or in that instance. Um, just to throw out the title of my book, which also has Evil Dead in chapter one. Yes. Um, but yeah, in that moment, they were either there or not. You know, that, that's that's the confusing part. You know, did it all happen? Did did the events in in number one happen? Did the events in number two happen? Yeah. But is that the implication then? Because obviously, by the end of this one, he literally goes into an alternate dimension, doesn't he? he? But does. he goes through the window with the portal of the window, and that's it. He yeah. wakes up somewhere is it else. Med medieval Britain, is it? 1800s, yeah. <laughs> but then it, it also gets confusing again because he's still working at that store. Yeah. And Bridget Fonda is there. <laughs> But I suppose co continuity between the stories is not what they're worried about, is it's it? Not. It's not. And it never, and, and it, you know, we don't sit here going, well, that was stupid, that was dumb. We don't, because yeah. it's just, it, it really gets a pass no matter what it does. And Army of Darkness was such a risk. Yeah. To follow on. I mean, and also, because the first two films are so gory and they're clearly 18, where Army of Darkness is a 15. It's got gore in it, but it's not really about that now. There's deadites in it. Yeah, it's more Clash of the Titans. It's more it's, it's Simbad the Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. It's it doesn't seem to fit yeah. in with the typical horror genre. And he literally has a stop motion fight with a load of skeletons, in it, doesn't he? It does, yeah. 
Yeah, Clash yeah. of the Titans. I'm pretty sure that was that one. Or Jason and the Argonauts. One of those two. Yeah, but I'm saying Ash has a fight with some skeletons, doesn't exactly, he? Like stop yeah. That's exactly what he does. Yeah, he does. He has... Uh, and they're also wielding swords. And it's also... I mean, there's there's got to be some sort of reference for that. The reason why... 1992. I just want to see what year you were up What year? Yeah, 1992. Bloody hell. But nobody expected that. No, Nobody who watched the first two films could have expected Army of Darkness to, to be a, a follow-up. No. It just, you know, I mean, it's like when, you, when we, we were talking about Die Hard and how when they get to three, it's, it kind of gets a bit tired because they're doing pretty much the same thing, but in a different city. And But they kind of like ruined the whole dynamic of, of what Bruce McClain was. That was the, st- the beginning of the ruination of, of John McClain. Yeah. This... Not, not like Bruce McClain was his brother as well. Bruce McClain. I call him Bruce McClain. Did I call him Bruce McClain? <laughs> oh, Bruce, yeah. Bruce McClain was one of the extras in Evil Dead. Three. Oh yeah, Army of Darkness. And that isn't called Evil Dead Three, is it? It's just called Army of Darkness. It just is Evil Dead Three. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure John Carpenter brought out Prince of Darkness not that far around at that time as well, wasn't it? Prince of Darkness. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, yeah, about eighty nine, ninety, maybe. It's probably about five years difference, probably knowing me, but. But yeah, I mean, uh, Army of Darkness, what does that sound like to you? Um, an, an, an army in the night time? <laughs> You're thinking Deadites at night, Deadites at night, but, med- at night. but the medieval times? It's like, who, who could have thought? Who could have thought that would have worked? What, what sort of works really well about it, though, is because... Because, you know, um, Ash is a bit of a loser. He's working in that convenience store. He's not making any money. He's got, he's, he's got a girlfriend, but he's got really nothing going for him. But once he gets sucked into medieval time, all of a sudden, he's the king. He even says, hail to the king, baby, doesn't he? Hail to he, the king, because baby. He comes down with his car, his cars there. So yeah. all of a sudden, from, from zero to... Hero, literally. So, yeah. so you know. is is this just um, a fantasy for him? Is this his fantasy? Wow, could be. I mean, every loser wants to be a winner, right? And it yeah. doesn't just get handed to you. I mean, that's not that's not what movies tell you. Movies don't say, you know, that's it, you're a winner. There always has to be adversity, and of course, well. He goes through a lot of adversity. Is this is this what he earned, you know, to be yeah. honoured? But then realising that he really didn't want that to begin with, that this isn't what he, you know, he's too humble to accept it in the end. Otherwise, yeah. he would have stayed there. Yeah. Yeah, he could have stayed there. Could have. Yeah. Really. Because Bridget Fonda was waiting for him, that's why. He's not, he's not worried about... Changing the course of history, is he? Because he literally shoots King Arthur's sword in half when he gets there. Yeah. You know, um, he's not worried about the space time continuum. And again, yeah, space time continuum be damned, but then reality be damned because isn't he in the middle of the United States of America? What's King Arthur doing there? And, and it's, this, is, this is the American mind thinking that, you know, everything that's happened in history happened here. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is kind of a mindset where it thinks, you know, oh yeah, well, Robin Hood is a, he's going to have an American accent. You know, it's it's Nottingham. Oh yeah, we can have our own Nottingham. But you know, King Arthur, it, it's it's our stuff, baby. You know, we didn't send Br- Bruce Campbell over to England. You know. No, but did you, was that not the implication though? It goes, he just sucked through that wormhole into medieval England. Yeah. Or is he in America? Oh, yeah, but the the setting and the and the, the the desert and the 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 rocks, it's all Los Angeles landscape. Yeah, it's definitely not British landscape. Well, yeah, yeah, but they obviously didn't have the money to think. Well, let's go and shoot all this in America in Britain. Yeah, yeah but they didn't even disguise it. So, is it really 
King Arthur and is is it all just this deadite fantasy is it you know um what but but why King Arthur why the middle ages the sorry the medieval time why 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 did it happen why not <laughs> the why not thing yeah but if i i think i think is if mm, if ash if this was kind of sewn into his origin story that as a kid he always wanted to be king arthur if there was something kind of like a a setup for this to be a payoff then it would have it would have made more sense but it is like we, like we say it doesn't matter that it doesn't make sense because it is so much fun it is a romp he modifies his uh, chainsaw to to do other things and it's you know it yeah in the past see there's no story there's no why there's no why there's no. just there's just it's, you know it's because movie and that's it it's just movie and yeah you know i i couldn't be more happy with it you know and and it's funny oh, okay yeah so it's it's if you took that as like a trilogy of films, yes. it's pretty perfect, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it ends pretty well, and and you know he's going to just be the aimless drifter at the end and accepting of his his place. Um, reality be damned. Um, that's it. No, yeah. there really was nowhere else to go with that series. I don't think. I mean, you could have always gone Evil Dead in space, and he goes to some space station somewhere. He's battling deadites on a space station somewhere. But there is that, Andy. There is always that possibility. But then you've also got to consider the big ultimate question that we always like to consider. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you you know what I'm thinking, right? I know you think, kid. Oh. No. <laughs> I listened to another podcast. It's called The Weekly Planet. And they're just these two Australian nerds. And every time they talk about a film, at some point, he always says, So, Mason, what's the story? He goes, Oh, because you can never think of the story properly. No, no and I he's can't. Gonna do it. This is our that. Yeah, this is our that. You know, yeah. but but also we can't think of the story. Sometimes we, we just kind of like remind each other parts of a film and like, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then pretend yeah, that we yeah. know that all along. But uh, yeah, it, it does it does um, make it tricky when you throw in Michael Bay. <laughs> um, but oh, no. oh. maybe we shouldn't do it. Maybe we should try somebody else for a change. <clears throat> I mean, who who would have taken Evil Dead off Sam Raimi's hands realistically? I can't think of anyone who could have made these films like this. That's Other it. than Sam Raimi, that frantic camera work is just so Sam Raimi, and the quick shots and the weird angles. Yeah, the the quick Pure thinking, the imagination, the 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 complete disregard for Bruce Campbell's safety. It it all makes ev everything in these movies yeah. so so flawless. So yeah, th there is no Michael Bay moment in this show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there is, there just imagine. isn't. You're right. It's like George yeah. Miller. Can't, George Miller is Mad Max. George, yeah, only, absolutely. Only George Miller can make Mad Max. And yeah. even that's funny. Even that has its own sense of humor, and you can go back to that and rewatch those and, and be reminded of new things as you go. But then you could go, here you go, Fede Alvarez, make a remake of Evil Dead. But take all the fun out of it. Mm. Get as nasty as you possibly can, but actually, in the the remake of Evil Dead, the twenty thirteen with, with uh, I forget the the actress in it, but like she's a she's a drug addict, she's going through withdrawal. It's yeah. really grim. Even the beginning of it is absolutely horrible. It is. I mean the the um, the the uh, sacrifice. Which is all underground, by the way, which yeah. doesn't make sense. Because... Which I assume is, is the cellar of the cabin in the woods. I assume that's where it is. It, it is the basement. Uh, and But the thing is, they set fire to her 
fire the the fire is real the, the fire wasn't supernatural fire was it it was real fire they they real poured gas they tried, yeah so, they tried to do it as practically as they could in this i think so yeah the, all i could think of was um okay they haven't actually gotten out of the basement before they set fire to her the whole place is made of wood yeah the whole yeah. cabin is made of wood it's all seasoned wood it would go what? up but it's like yeah there was a, there was a, a you know oh. yeah but that's the strange thing right when you watch the original evil dead films you don't worry about logic no you don't it's, feel, it's not it's not about that but this film because they try to root it in a reality yes and make it as nasty as possible you kind of you think about those things you think of, yeah like, exactly between the quality of filmmaking where you you do think about that and practically and like you know like when she she gets that uh, meat cutter and slices her tongue in half, yes. By the end of the film, the tongue's fine again. But and I'm like, well, she's a fucking mess. So when at the end of the film, she'd be an absolute, she wouldn't be able to walk, but she's she she makes it out she's, the whole time. Yeah, it would be like steak tongue. Yeah, but no, it's fine though. You but worry about it. that. But yeah. It's not a bad film though. It's not a badly made film, but there's no. no, no. There's, there's, skill, no, but there's no there's skill in it. Yeah, it's really well made film. The gore is absolutely really well done, and it's just you know it's horrible. And the tree thing is even worse because it goes up a skirt, but it's like a really thick trunk, and you know where that's gone. Yeah. Even though, yeah, it never comes out again. It's still up there at the end of the film. It doesn't come back out. And that's the thing in the original. You know, it, the tree, the the branch just goes between the legs. And, the, and I guess the implication is the evil gets into her through that. Yeah. Well, then it goes up there and stays there. But with this, a big, bloody, horrible, thick branch goes up there. It, be- it becomes, yeah, it becomes Clockwork Orange, um, Concrete yeah. Dildo. I mean, it, it's, yeah. and there was no need to kind of take it there. There was no reason to take it there. I mean, if you think about it, Demon Seed was, was, was the, one of those films where uh, being impregnated by um, a an entity or the entity you know those kind of films that they, they are rooted in that rooted which is australian for for yeah um it, it's it's that that kind of sense of reality but then you're 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 saying that 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 this kind of thing is uh, is an acceptable part of 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 this mythos again yeah and it's like well it's, it, it doesn't need to be there it, it you know that that's not how the deadites work the deadites possess your mind they don't have to uh you know to do anything to you like that yeah but the, and yeah having us like a, an addict who's going through withdrawal is yeah it they could have done a little bit more with that because they basically yeah. said right put all the evil dead humor to one side yeah this is just going to be horror and grim and nasty okay yeah, uh, yeah. You know, so she's a recovering addict. So they could have done way more than that, where they don't, and they do sort of do it a little bit where they don't trust her because of all these things that she's saying she's seen. They say, well, she's coming off the drugs. That's what it is. That's it. They explored that way better than I think they did. They yeah. don't try anything different because when, either that's because it's a message thing. Everybody knows somebody who has overdosed, or you know, and, and they're afraid of kind of like putting that into into a context of of comedy or humor or giving them something other than just addict yeah there's got to be so much more to a character than just addict you know yeah well it is a arc the fact that she she starts this as an addict and by the end of murder you know chopping all the demons up and that yeah. she recovered She's not an addict addict anymore. She's now dead eye killer. <laughs> dead eye killer, and she survives, and that's it. She she steps out into and into the sun, and the sun almost as if the sun is saying, "You're clean. You 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 did yeah. it. Well done." And uh, but that is it's like oh, but it, it doesn't make you feel like, and, and you know, it, it, maybe maybe this entire film is in her head. And uh, the you know the, the kill all her friends turn into these raging monsters that she that, that she yeah. has to she has to kill, and I, how she 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 deforms herself and then she has to kill all her friends who's turned into her. Is yeah. that all in her mind? And that's just her getting over the drugs. That's it. I mean, that could be it. I mean, 
um, you know, ev everybody's deadite fantasy is not going to be full of slap slapstick humor. You know, it yeah. depends on, on the person, but it's not somebody you want to wrap a movie around. No, you know? it's, it's no. too heavy. Too it heavy. is. And also like a horror film, you want it to be scary. And the thing with this film, it's not scary. It's gory, but it's not scary. Yeah, it, it definitely isn't scary. I mean, there, there's actually a jump scare in it where she's in the car and she, she uses her windscreen wipers. And it wasn't even a jump. It was just a, oh, there she is in the road. Oh, it was, oh, oh, rather than, ah, you know. They can't even you know get jump why? scares right. You know why, don't you? Ear the because, three. Yeah, they didn't do the ear the three. They didn't do the ear the three. And it wasn't. It was just a, there she is. Oh, and that was it. Yeah. There was no E of the three. There was, and, and, you know, I'm not saying that jump scares are the thing that every horror film should have. And, you know, that, that's, that's. But if you're going to do one. If you're going to do it. Right. Do so it. what we mean by E of the three is it, we, 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 we sort of did jump scares as a musical thing, didn't we? Yeah. So you've got to know what's not a good jump scare if you've got the one, two, three, four. One, two, three. If it comes on the one, two, three, and the four, it's not funny. It's not scary because you're expecting it. Yeah, but in between this, you've got eighth notes and sixteenth notes. So a sixteenth note you would count as one e and the two e and the three e and the, and if it comes on the one e and the two e and the three e, there you're not expecting it, and that's when it becomes scary. Yes, yeah. Just yeah. So I thought a little bit of people may not understand the backstory to the year the three. Yeah. We're just saying, hey, well, we haven't know. mentioned it since for a long time. So yeah, that is exactly it. That's it's it's music theory, which applies so beautifully to horror theory and that is uh andy lewin's 0.005 percent yeah yes reprise so yeah expect no nothing else <laughs> that, yeah that, that's it it's all downhill for now we still got <laughs> to end it gosh um so yeah, yeah uh, and, and it, it is just a, a miserable movie and um i think all, all critics are kind of agree on that it doesn't it doesn't hold up to the original there's no need for it to actually be associated with the original and yeah. And then, and then of course they decided let's do another one. Yeah. Well, at the end of this, if you go through all the credits at the yeah, VR, yes. you see the silhouetted Ash and he just turns to the camera and says, groovy. And, and you think, thinking, oh, oh. That was, yeah, great. Now that's, now we're talking. And then they obviously did this Ash versus evil dead, the series, which yeah. is brilliant. Bloody love it. It was that was my favorite thing that was on TV when it was out. I loved it. Was. it. it, it, it was, I think it was hilarious. Last Man on Earth was, was the kind of the one that thing that was happening before this. And then Ash versus the Evil Dead. I mean, the characters are, are great. I, I, I yeah. love them to pieces. They're amazing. I mean, even um uh even Xena Princess Warriors in there, you know. Yeah, she is. Yeah, and she's great in it. She's really good. Yeah. But does yeah. It plays I out mean, really funny, and it's just yeah, half hours. And it's, yeah, and it's pure it's, Evil Dead. Just sure. everything is thrown at it. You know, there's one bit in the morgue where a dead eye ends up shoving Ash's face into his arsehole, and then and Ash is wearing this arsehole dead eye on his head, and he's trying, he's trying to get it off, and he's fighting other dead eyes. Brilliant. And it's absolutely alert. It's pure slapstick. It's gory as hell. It's got heart. That's what it's got. That's a, it's got it, and I think that's that's the likability of Bruce Campbell. It's got heart. Yeah. He he yeah. he relates so he's so humbled with the fandom and the and he he gives a hundred and thirty percent. You know, maybe one hundred and thirty-five um, yeah. percent. To, uh, he he meets the fans. He adores the fans, and he knows what the fans want. Yeah, and it's that. It was exactly that, and he wasn't going to mess around and say, "No, you know what? We're going to we're going to subvert their expectations. We're going to we're going to yeah. We're not we're not going to Twin Peaks to return it. We're no, going to no, do no. exactly what they want. Yeah, that was kind of lovely. that should be the next thing. Okay. What would David Lynch do? <laughs> what would David Lynch do? Well, to be honest, David Lynch, I don't think he would be able to do an Evil Dead movie. No, you can't like him to an evil dead, but I'm just saying, like, for the next film we talk about, we yeah, maybe so. say, what would David Lynch do with this? Yeah, but, that'd yeah. be a good one, yeah. Oh, if, if it's a... The thing is, you can't, because it's so Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, it's like their baby. Yeah, it you is, can't yeah. Nothing, nothing can touch it. It's incredible. And, um, 
then of course we're after he, 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 the Ash versus the Evil Dead, which you know everybody should watch it, rewatch it. It's all on Netflix. Um, available on subscription and um yeah, yeah it's not it's, i, I want to get the actual um physical copies on dvd though but uh the, i do uh, i really do i think it's, it's nice to have some sort of physical thing to have on the shelf just as just to yeah. have it there yeah evil and then dead we got rise. evil dead rise yeah which came out last year yeah it was a surprise i was expecting something much worse and yeah it's I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's it, it's what for what it, it's worth. It, for what it's worth, yeah. I mean, they've sort of opened up the fact that there's lots of books of the dead. There's lots of Necronomicons. This is just another one that they found after the earthquake. That's it. That that yeah, that's what the director is saying. Is like there was a lot of lot of these books made. It weren't just the one that Ash finds. There's quite a few of these books that have been made. And but this then, is one but of then, them. if 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 Ash can move to you know the the medieval England, then yeah. maybe the book can travel itself as well. Maybe the book is a, a well, you know. The, yeah, the filmmakers have said it's a different book. They said it's a, a different book. Yeah, it's definitely okay. a different book. Yeah. Okay. So they're probably just building on their own mythos then and saying that the yeah. things that are in the Ashes book might be different or is it just the same? Yeah, it's a different book. It's different writing. I don't know. It's got pictures by a, you know, it's got a little little uh, forward by A. A. Mill. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. It's yeah, it's illustrated by uh, Roald Dahl, uh, um, whoever. Yeah. Did, uh, Quentin Blake. That's it. Illustration by Quentin Blake. You should see the book. <laughs> yeah, it's now been distributed by Disney. That's that's the book. Yeah, yeah. distributed that's by it, Disney. Yeah. Financed by Jeff Bezos. Uh, well, and also glorified by uh, Lady Gaga, and, and there is a, a fluffy, fluffy version of uh, of the book as well. If if you want to uh, get that in the Disney, yeah, so that, that, yeah, that meat dress she wore for that thing that was literally the, the yeah, the, yeah, the disembodied parts of some dead eye that yeah, she wore it's pieces, which yeah. uh, I, I I referenced pieces earlier about the the little boy doing the pornographic jigsaw, but but pieces is kind of a um, very much a chainsaw massacre. Kind of a, a film. Have you, have you seen that one? I've not seen pieces. No. 1982. It's um. It's on. It's on the the YouTube. In fact, um. No. Well, it's a very underrated um, horror film. But it's uh, yeah. It basically the the the, the killer is making a, a a full body suit of a person by chopping pieces off them, and uh, he's obsessed with uh, completing this this jigsaw that his mother wouldn't let him have. And it's kind of a weird one. It's kind of very uh, Dario Argento slash, right. but it's an American movie. And it reminded me a lot of Evil Dead, uh, I guess, because Chainsaw and Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre, but it's, 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 it's another one of those. But yeah, sorry, I, I digress. Back to Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, again, it's a good film. It's all right. And it brings back a little bit more of the humor, the Deadites have the humor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, they're having a good old time murdering and doing the thing and they enjoy it they like torturing humans and the yeah. shocks are real and the scares are real and, and there's a yeah. there's also a little girl in it who needs needs help getting through this yeah there was also a little child that turns into a dead eye yeah and yeah. they went there they did i mean and and it could be argued that since the exorcist uh, there've been a thousand girls who've been possessed by by something demonic and uh, oh, we have that you brought when we talked about Evil Dead. There's no kids in it, so maybe yeah. that's what we thought. Is that the one thing no one's ever done with an Evil Dead film? It's a child. Yeah. So let's so let's do that. So let's let's go for it. Yeah. Let's uh, let's bring that in. They kind of kind of did that for. I mean, I mean that could have been a little girl in in the Evil Dead remake who got burned yeah. at the stake. Could they yeah. could have really gone innocent on a on on that yeah. father, and completely wreck him beyond belief because it would have been a five-year-old screaming for a life i mean but they, they wouldn't do that they wouldn't do that they didn't no, go that, that far. too much yeah. that was actually that was one bit where she's like please daddy please i'll swallow your soul daddy but she says it in her own she voice says it in her own voice and that's then quite creepy. That's, yeah. that's that's creepy i'll, yeah. I'll give him i'll give him that 
That's yeah. that bit of the I thought. That's a bit creepy. Yeah. But then she goes all, oh, and then, all right. Okay. And then they just, yeah, they took it away. They should if have just kept, kept it. Just that, I'll yeah. swallow your soul, daddy, in her own voice. In That's own creepy. Voice. And no. then burn her. And then and leave it to you, the viewer, to decide are they crazy or was was that what did she did you did you did they hear what she said yeah you know i mean that's not a right thing to say for a child but she no, she said all right she looks good all these yeah. people are yeah. yeah he didn't so nope. we don't have to worry about that no. so what's next for the evil dead do you think there's got to be another one um Bruce campbell's leaving well alone now right He's... i think so he produces them doesn't he yeah he produces films and i think he's still him and Raimi are still involved in where the story goes. They're allowing it to happen. They're yeah, just the allowing it to evolve. I think said it. No, this director, he'd done a shorter, he'd done something else, and I think Sam Raimi asked him to come in and say, we've got an idea. No, or pitch me an Evil Dead film. I like what you did with that, pitch me an Evil Dead film. I think that's what happened. So I think the, you know, I think Evil Dead films will still always be a thing, but I doubt Sam Raimi's going to be making any more. That'll be it, yes. Well, there we go. Yeah. Future of Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell confirms that there are plans for more Evil Dead movies in the future following a success Evil Dead rise. The filmmakers are given creative freedom to decide the tone and direction of each installment, whether it's straight horror or a brighter tone full of like Evil Dead 2. So I think what they're doing now is just going to up-and-coming directors and say, pitch me an Evil Dead film. If you like it, they'll get finance for it and get it better. Yeah. And they'll just keep Evil Dead films coming out and they'll be slightly different. Some might be horrific, some might be funny, some might be that. Whatever yeah. gets me. Yeah. And, and hopefully it won't just be an, another Evil Dead uh, in, a, in another location, dark and grisly. But, but think about what it is. Think about what the Evil Dead really is. I mean, it's not of this world. It's not of this reality. Yeah. The, the the universe is your oyster with these movies. You could do anything, and that's probably the, the, the there's too much freedom with them, mm. which makes it you know you know you don't want to go Freddy Krueger when it becomes the, too much freedom is not a good thing. Yeah, you gotta kind of ground it somewhere along the line, but it's you don't have to ground it in exactly the same spots. You know, you, which, yeah. I mean, like freedom is great when you when you're Sam Raimi. Yes. But when you're not as talented as Sam Raimi, but you're still a, 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 a very good director who's got vision for it, you yeah. do whatever you want. Mm. You know? I mean, could you imagine Quentin Tarantino making an Evil Dead film? No, but I think Max Landis would probably love to do it. Yeah. Um, I can imagine. I, I wouldn't want to watch that. I'm not really a, a fan of his, but I can. No, they, these are the people who I can imagine. Um, Eli Roth. Oh, no, get away. That's what I mean. These no. are the people who would would have enough ego to think that they can take it on. And I, I think it, I would be very concerned about taking it on. I mean, if someone came to me and says, you know, come up with an Evil Dead story, I'd be like, how do, how do you do that? How, you know? Maybe this week we should both think of an idea of an Evil Dead film. And before we talk about what we're going to talk about next week, we pitch ourselves an Evil Dead film. Do you do you want to take that assignment? Yes. I, I do too. Yeah, let's yes. do it. Working on an original premise that doesn't tie in with anything that we've thought about before. Listeners, I have never seen Stephen look as animated as he does right now. His eyes have gone huge. <laughs> really? This? <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm excited. That that is a that is a really. I, mean, I like. I like it when you throw a challenge out at the uh, the eleventh hour. I think that's a really, yeah. really good part of this podcast. Now, I think that's going yeah. to be that will replace the Michael Bay crap that we, <laughs> we keep on. Yeah, I do like. I think we should bring that back though. I do like doing the Michael Bay thing every now and again. Little thing, yeah. every so often, you know. Yeah. yeah. So there we go, Andy. Wrapped up. Evil Dead. Evil Dead. If Excellent. you haven't seen it, then uh, what are you doing? What are you doing oh. with your life? Yeah. And, I can, you know, just as a, like, a last thought, I like what they do, what they're doing with it now. Like, really, they were straight out of college. Did they, he'd done a short, hadn't he? And this was his first big film. That's it. And now, you know, I, I think 
I think he's got. I think Sam Raimi is keeping an eye out for like people who've released shorts on YouTube and thought that's good. I then contacted him and say, right, pitch me an Evil Dead film. Someone yeah. we've not seen. Kind of a is it Jennifer Kent who did Babadook? Kind of a situation, yeah. you know, where it's short film. Yes, that worked. Go make that film. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So of like, for. let's make that film. Right. That's a really good short. I like it's something I've not seen before. I like that. Pitch me an Evil Dead film and we'll get it made if I like it. I like that. And he's helping upcoming filmmakers make films. There's a challenge. Challenge accepted. I have just had an idea, so I'm going to write down to get it. Oh, you just I'll write an idea? Yeah, oh. Evil Dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Type it up. Right. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. Andy, thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, buddy. For your Pleasure. Time. And, um, yeah. Um, All right, buddy. We're ending this, Andy. This is it, the big ending. Get it, you ready? Don't fluff it up. Okay. Uh, well, Thanks a lot, people. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. I'll swallow your soul. <laughs> Why won't it stop? Why won't it stop? I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Ow! Charlie, go this is fantasy. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Quit griping. I like griping. <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. <laughs>